1 Samuel chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24. Uh, the chapter divides into three divisions. The first seven verses is Saul and David and his men in the cave of Engedi. We did that last week. The second division is verse 8 through 15, which is David's defense to Saul concerning his innocence. The third division is uh, <coughs> verse 16 to 22, which is Saul's reply to David. Um, in today's lesson, there are three important lessons for us. Number one, what David said to Saul in tonight's lesson is the most poignant defense uh, given to a ruler by a subject in the Bible. It's the most pointed defense of a subject to a ruler in the entire Bible. We'll get into that. Second thing, uh, there is a lesson for us if and when we might need it, and that is how to communicate with an enemy. <coughs> Obviously, if you ever go talk to an enemy, enemy, it wouldn't be to make him so mad he hits you. You have to go talk to an enemy. The whole idea is to hopefully resolve the situation. We'll learn about that. And then thirdly, there is a lesson on Christian courtesy among believers. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Now, the first thing I want to do tonight is I want to read, just reread last Wednesday night's seven verses because tonight's lesson flows out of the first seven verses. So, first of all, uh, let's read verse 1 through 7 of 1 Samuel 24. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, The old David is in the wilderness of Engedi, desert, rocky, cavey, ledgy land, uh, desert land to the southeast of Jerusalem. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goat. I, I, didn't, I don't remember saying this last week. But to get some idea how rough the terrain is when it's called the rocks of the wild goats. In other words, it's, it's an area where you, you nearly need to be a four-legged goat to make your way around it. That's pretty rough land. And he came to the sheep coats by the way, where it was a cave. Remember what I said about those caves? Very large. Uh, partly naturally so because it's that kind of soil and partly made bigger uh, by the shepherds because in the summertime, in the heat of the day, they would take their sheep that they were herding into those caves and uh, bed them down uh, until the weather cooled off. And he came to the sheep goats, by the way, where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. Saul did an unwise thing, removing himself from his men. And David and his men were in there, and they knew it, but Saul never did. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. i got to pause there and say this, because I remember specifically not saying this last week about verse 4. You can't find a verse quoted by David's men saying God said he would deliver him into your hand and kill him. 
Up to this point, there is no such verse. So the guys were misquoting God and trying to get uh, David to do something that God had told him not to do. And you always, when you hear things like this, you always think of Psalms 1 1. Blessed is the man that walked not in the counsel of the ungodly. Be careful. You know, a, a lost man, you know, Christians have trouble telling the truth sometimes. Uh, a lost man usually has no form of <coughs> not telling the truth. So you, you have to be careful what you listen to. And by the way, as a Christian community, on, on every radio station, on every television station, sooner or later you hear preaching, I don't swallow a whole hog. Check it out. Get your Bible down. Is that really what it says? Is that, is that really true? Here's some man quoting supposedly what God said. When to this point, God had not said any such thing. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. Now, he shouldn't have done that. Would you walk, you know, die? Have you noticed uh, Mr. Trump's dress coat? He always wears that long coat. He had it on yesterday when he was introducing the new Supreme Court pick, which, by the way, uh, uh, not to deter too far from the sermon, good pick. The man is pro-life. The man is a strict constitutionalist. <clears throat> he wants to interpret the Constitution by how the writers meant it, not how the times have changed by it. Big difference, folks. But if you had an opportunity to meet Mr. Trump, would you take a sharp pocket knife with you and cut off a cord, cut off a little piece of his coat as a souvenir? Point being, that would be very disrespectful to God-authorized authority, okay? So the result is, and it came to pass afterward that David Charles smote him because it cut off Saul's skirt. And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words. And let me pause there. Not only did David in his heart regret doing what he did, he explained to his men why he should not have done that and why he would not harm the king. Sometimes our actions, good or bad, need to be explained. Sometimes you don't leave things hanging. Sometimes you need to explain your actions. So David stayed his servants with these words. God honored David's tender heart God honored that he confessed it to the Lord, and God honored his testimony to his men with power. And they then would not lay a hand on Saul. The Lord's anointed straight forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words, and suffered them not to rise, uh, suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went out his way. He had no clue that David and his men were in that cave. He had no clue. He was seconds from death. He had no clue. Wonder how many times we got close, either by our dumb behavior or by somebody else's dumb behavior, and the Lord protect us. And folks, we'll never know when we get to heaven. Safeties of the Lord. Yeah. I will both lay me down and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Psalms, I think it's 2 8. Thou holdest my soul in life. Spurgeon used to have this little quick <coughs> shaft can hit till God sees fit. That's true. The day of our birth is ordained of God. The day of our death is ordained of God. Now then, beginning, verse 8, I just want to walk you, secondly, 
I'm going to go ahead and walk you for uh, verses 8 through 15. And then I have, uh, I think, seven applications. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, He would not stretch forth his hand to kill Saul physically, but he would lift his voice to stay Saul's enmity. And I guess I ought to give credit to credit to Sue. That was a direct quote from Matthew Henry. But I thought it was a quote worth memorizing. And he cried at the soul, saying, My Lord the King. Now here is a ruler who was ruthlessly out to kill David. Yet when they met, David said, my Lord, the King, he addressed him with dignity. And when Saul looked behind him, I would have been, I would have loved to have been a fly on Saul's shoulder when he turned around and saw David standing and realizing I was in the cave with that guy. When Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. Folks, respect is due to leaders. You don't have to like them. You don't have to agree with their stands. But leaders are appointed by God for the good of civilization we have to honor the office. You have to honor the office. Something else that I read, this wasn't Matthew Henry, this was somebody else I read. Um, the dog will bark at the sheep, but the sheep don't snap back. That's just good Christian behavior. Mm -hmm. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy face. I want you to hear. Notice, notice what David said. Well, really, notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, You scoundrel, why are you trying to kill me? He takes a very mild, generous approach. Why are you listening to to other men, to other people who are saying bad things about me. Why are you believing rumors? When you face people, give them the benefit of the doubt until they prove themselves otherwise. Behold this day, thine eyes have seen how that the Lord has delivered thee today into my hand in the cave. And that's true. God did. Romans 11, 36. Of him, through him, to all things. This meeting was of God. It wasn't for David uh, to kill Saul. It was for David to grow in grace and, and show what kind of a man he was. He was a better man than Saul. How the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, but mine eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. We covered that pretty good last week. Now I want you to notice in verse 11, he says, Now he says, not king, but he says, more for my father. Remember, he was married to Saul's youngest daughter, <clears throat> Micah. So now he goes from uh, honoring a dignity, uh, honoring um, uh, authority, now he uses the family appeal. When, uh, when Abraham and some others of uh, lots of people got into it, Abraham said, let's not fight, we be brethren. 
Well, we do that to remember that, amen? In our families, in our churches, wherever we are in unison. Move my father, see it. See the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and kill thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in me in mine hand. For I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. He held up that piece of a skirt that he cut off, and he said, Look, I cut off thy skirt, but I didn't kill you. When I cut your skirt off, I could have just as easily killed you instead of cut the skirt off. That proves I have no intentions of hurting you or killing you. Yeah. Boy, that should have moved us all. Amen. And I have not sinned against thee, and that's true yet. Yet the hunt is my soul to take it. That's true. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. Now see, now David does say what God said. His men falsely said, God said, do this. But now David is speaking the truth. He said, God will take care of you. By the way, he can do a little bit. He can do a lot better job than you and I ever could. As saith the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. In other words, what David is saying is wicked men do wicked things, and since I didn't do anything wicked to you, I am not the wicked wretch you're making me out to be. You can speak truth, if you use your head, you can speak truth to opposition without inflaming them. But you've got to be a spirit-filled Bible student, praying Christian, but you can do that. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? Here's David's humility. What he's saying to Saul is, Saul, you're the king. What are you doing chasing me? I, I'm a nobody. What's a flea worth? What's a dead dog worth? I remember well, and I think about it a lot. One of the lessons that I was taught <coughs> as a young preacher said, when you go up there to preach, you go up there like a lamb. You might come down like a lion, but if you go up there like a lion, you will come down like a lamb. There's a lot to be gained with the spirit of humility. Jesus said, it says when he was reviled, he was reviled not again. When he threat, when he was threat, when he uh, when when he was threatened, he suffered not, but committed his cause to his Father in heaven. That's how Christians operate. And then verse 15, the Lord therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver, out, and deliver me out of thy hand. Ultimately, David says, look, David understood by verse 15 that he wasn't going to win Saul over. He understood that. By the way, the first verse of next Sunday lesson. Uh, of the next lesson, after uh, Saul and uh, David, uh, after David talked and Saul responded, when, when Saul got done, Saul went back to town, but David went back to the cave. So David understood. He did what was right, but he knew he wasn't going to win Saul. So he finally, his last words to Saul was, I am committing this to my Lord, and I'm going to let the Lord take care of it. And folks, there are times when you and I are not going to be reconciled to people. Some people just won't. For whatever reason, and finally and ultimately, the Bible says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. So, 
Seven lessons in conclusion. Number one, David asked Saul if it was not unjust to listen to slander against him in verse 9. You know the lesson for us is very, very, very obvious. Do not listen to slander from someone about someone else. Just don't do that. By the way, you know the best way to stop it? Oh, are we going to talk about so-and-so? Yeah. Okay, let, let me call them real quick. Get them to meet us. I'll guarantee you, it'll be the end of this. It'll be the end. It'll stop it right there. People who will talk about you do not want to talk to you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Lesson number two, the fear of God. Ultimately, it was the fear of God that kept David from sinning presumptuously. A tender heart. That's another way of saying he feared God. He honored God. He honored the Word of God. He honored biblical principles. It was the fear of God. How many times have we really wanted to give somebody a piece of our mind, but the Holy Spirit spoke to heart and said, forget it, and so we didn't. Most of us cannot afford to give anybody a piece of our mind. We don't have enough as it is. That was a joke, folks. I just want to make sure y'all got it. Number three, his actions proved his theology. Don't preach one thing and live another. People around you know that you are a Christian. Your actions are the only theology they're going to believe, not your words. Your life is the only Bible some people will ever read. Number four, he affirmed to Saul he had no intentions of returning evil for evil. Remember what, uh, what we read last week about uh, um, retaliation, Romans 12, verse 7 to the end of the chapter. You do not return evil for evil, you return good for evil. And God will bless you. And God will take care of the scoundrel in his time. Number five, the advice to not listen to evil reports of good people. Jew talked about they who speak evil of dignities. I, 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 I you know, I mean, I didn't make no moment about it. I was not a lover, nor did I vote for uh, President Obama, but he was my president, and I prayed for him. And I really tried never to talk evil about him because he is God's man. But have you ever, what, but I, I, I would say in defense of any high government official, the American public, what the American public now expects out of rulers, only God can do. We expect things from our rulers that just can't be done. This is an evil world that's heading for judgment. And, and yes, we can maybe stay in the flow a little bit, but folks, there's no human being alive going to stop what's coming. apologetic about this. I, I think we need to be very careful about running down the rulers. Because let me tell you something. Especially if all you know is what you get on the news media, you don't know anything. I, I would just say be careful. Blessed is the man that <coughs> doesn't uh, hang around ungodly people and listen to their godly talk. Christians pray for their rulers. Ungodly people despise and talk bad about their rulers. Then number six, you, we saw David's humility. Now, boy, that'll go a long way. By the way, that'll, first of all, that'll go a long way with God. Secondly, that'll go a long way with whoever you, you, you anybody in your life, school, home, work. And thirdly, uh, It'll go a long way if you do have enemies. When they 
see how you are. And then finally, number seven, David realizing the situation, realizing he wasn't going to change Saul, David committed it all to the Lord. Because ultimately, if not in this life, then in the next life, God will take care of the situation. A lot of good scriptures on this. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Evil communications corrupt good men. John is one of us that is man that standeth not in the counsel of the ungodly. 1 Peter 2, 17. Honor the king. Jude 8. They despise dominions and speak evil of dignitaries. I just have to go back in closing to the uh, verse that uh, I closed with last week. Uh, Romans Give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he, if he thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt eat cold and fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil of good. Our text tonight out of 1 Samuel is a living illustration of Romans 12. Verse 17 in the chapter. Amen. Amen. Lots of good stuff about how you want to be. Amen. Thank you.